The following program is sponsored by Boys Town. Los Angeles jury has convicted four gang members of the murder of... I got into the gang because it felt like a family. In New Jersey, police arrested a 13-year-old boy for the illegal possession of 21 rifles. People were shooting at us. There were drive-bys. An 18-year-old high school senior is accused of raping and murdering. There was so much violence. It's shocking. Almost every week we hear about violent crimes committed by teenagers. And in fact, the number of juveniles arrested for weapons offenses has more than doubled in the last 10 years. Homicides, murders by youths under 17 tripled between 1984 and 1994. The question is, can these kids be saved before it's too late? The answer from juvenile experts is a resounding yes. There is something that's working, something with a proven record of success. Remember Father Flanagan's Boys Town? Joe wants you to come with me to Boys Town. You've got a swell chance taking me to that joint. Well, today, Boys Town is leading a revolution in juvenile care. <laughs> Father Val Peter runs Boys Town now. Boys Town was founded over 80 years ago, and a lot has changed here. First of all, we have girls, lots of girls, as many as boys. Secondly, the enormity of the problems that these kids face are far, far worse than in Father Flanagan's day. They've been raped, they've been abused, they've been beaten, they've been sold into prostitution, or even pornography rings by their own parents. These are America's throwaway children. They come to Boys Town to be healed. The results are impressive. A recent study of Boys Town graduates shows an 81% success rate. Fortunately, there is hope, a way to rescue young lives and perhaps our very future. I want you to meet four remarkable kids, Robert, Valerie, Jose, and Nina. For me, their lives are the story behind the story of juvenile crime and violence. Imagine, for instance, you're a child who witnesses your father attacking your mother. You watch in horror as he nearly kills her. That's what happened to Robert when he was just a small boy. My mom and my dad had broke up. He had just found out that she had got pregnant. And when she told him that it wasn't his, he got mad and slit her throat and bashed her head in. Robert's mother was in an extreme critical condition. She was hurt very, very badly. She has physical scars and she has severe emotional and mental scars. And because of that, Robert often was left to bring himself up on the streets, hey, in the project's environment. No money, no food. I really didn't have any time to be a kid. I was too busy trying to put food on the table for my brothers. There was times when there was nothing in the house, and we would have had nothing to eat, but there was a school right behind our project. I would break into it. I'd go through their refrigerator and freezers and things. I mean, I didn't touch any of their computers or anything that you would think a real thief or somebody would really do. I just went through the refrigerator. <laughs> I took like frozen pizzas and things like that and brought it home. And always heard that if you're the oldest, that you should always take care of your family. I got deep into a lot of things that kids shouldn't get into. I got into 
drugs real early, got into gangs. I got into the gang because it felt like a family. The leader, he treated me good, he gave me money. He gave us clothes, he watched over us all. I ended up in jail for grand theft auto and evading police and having an illegal firearm. I was 15. Boys Town has an answer for teenage violence. The answer centers directly around what you see with Robert. If you're a little child and you don't have the love and you don't have the affection, you don't have the protection, first, you're a victim. And if we don't do anything to give you that love and protection, you will become a victimizer. Life didn't fail Robert at the uh, middle or at the end. It failed him right at the very beginning. I think when the first time I came here, the hardest thing for me to grasp was how to carry on a conversation. Sacrifice. Around Boys Town, you'll see a lot of very simple teaching activities going on. And people ask, why do you bother teaching, you know, shaking hands or eye contact? But it's like building blocks up from the most basic skills to the most sophisticated skills. The teaching takes place in our Boys Town family homes. A family teacher couple lives with each group of about eight kids. They're the ones who do the teaching, combining unconditional love and constant, constant teaching. Uh, the first few months, Robert needed someone who was not going to tolerate um, his defiant behavior. Any little thing that I could do to get in trouble, I pretty much tried to do. There were so many times that John and I would sit down at night and almost cry because we think, God, are we, are we going to lose him? The more that they kept trying to help me, the more I tried to push him away from me because I wasn't used to it. It was all in the way that we approached Robert. We respected him as a person. It wasn't so much what he said, but it was something that was in his eyes. You could just tell that this was somebody who was just looking for someone to help him straighten out his life. The closer Robert got to his Boys Town family, the more he knew he needed to cut the bonds with his gang family forever. I got tired of a lot of my friends getting hurt and beat up and everything. And he began by having his tattoos removed, one by one, stripping himself of his gang identity. It's about respect. That's -E -E then, one weekend, Robert went home to see his mother. While he was there, he was confronted by members of his gang. Hey, Robert, where you been, man? Yeah, homie, what's up? Unfortunately, this is something that happens all too often when kids want out of a gang. I thought I was going to die. You actually wish somebody would take a bullet to you because they come in with, it's everybody beats you. I didn't dare want to try to run because I knew that I don't have to go through it again. It lasts until they see that you can't move anymore. When I woke up, it was like a part of me was gone. My whole gang life was over. All of the respect that I had lost with the gangs was being replaced by like respect for stuff that I, I truly earned. I was having people respect me because of the work that I was doing in my grades, my athletics. Let's go, leaders, let's go. I think it was Boys Town that gave him the support system, the environment that he needed to make the changes. He's come from a kid that was looking at prison to a kid that can be anything he wants to be. Good job. Every little problem that's in my way is like a hurdle, and you just got to work a little bit harder to get over it. Every time I win a race, you feel good because you know 
There's people that admire you just for running the race. Sometimes people, they read the paper, they watch TV, and they say, wow, the problem's so big. If I can help one person, just one of these boys or one of these girls, I've made a huge difference. Well, when I think about Boys Town and how much I've changed just over three years, I'm like a totally different person. I am proof that Boys Town changed kids. Just take somebody to respect them and give them love. I used to never believe in miracles or anything like that, but it, it's, if there is, it's pretty close to it. If you or I met Robert three years ago, we might well have said, there's no change in a kid like that. He's too far gone. He either kills someone or be killed himself. What made the difference? A family, a structure, not the kind of family he was seeking when he joined the gang, but a healthy, nurturing, life-affirming Boys Town family with two caring parents, his family teachers, who validated him when he did well and enforced consequences when he broke the rules. And his life has changed. Right now, I want to ask you to go to your phone, call the toll-free number, and become a Boys Town family sponsor with a pledge of $20 a month. You'll be sponsoring a specific Boys Town family with up to eight kids and a trained family teacher couple who live with them. This is a family you're going to know about and feel close to. Here's how it works. When you call with your pledge, we'll send you a packet with a photo and personal letter from your family teacher couple telling you about themselves and giving you a description of the kids in their and your Boys Town family. Then every quarter, your family teachers are going to keep you updated on the progress of your Boys Town kids and the family's activities. Imagine the great feeling knowing you're helping provide shelter, safety, wholesome meals, the 24-hour love and training that are changing the lives of these kids, kids you can care about even pray for. Boys Town has launched one of the largest private expansions of youth care services in the history of our country to rescue kids like Robert to help save our communities and our future. Boys Town gives care to over 30,000 kids in over 16 centers across the nation. I hope you join me right now and call and say, count me in. I'll give $20 a month. I want to join the family and be a Boys Town family sponsor. Do it now. It wasn't too long ago that I had the privilege of speaking at Boys Town. I related a comment I heard from a young soldier during the Gulf War. He said, I'm not afraid because I'm well trained and I know my job. And I'm going into battle with my family. If you grow up in a family that loves and supports you, you can face almost anything. If you don't, you could be headed for trouble. Boys Town takes in kids in trouble and turns them around. They become a model for the nation and an American success story. I am proud to be an enthusiastic supporter of Boys Town, and I encourage you to join me. The message of Boys Town is simple and straightforward. Something works, somebody cares. For the last 20 years, we've accepted girls at Boys Town as well as boys. The old institutional dorms have gone. Instead, we give the kids a loving home at our main campus in Nebraska or any one of our 16 centers around the country. We're here 24 hours a day for our kids. We give them lots of love. But we also don't let them get away with anything. All our boys and girls get a good education. Um, they get medical care, clothing. And the kids have chores. They play sports and go to church or synagogue. Our success rate is 81%. That means a child graduates from the program and high school gets a job or goes on to college and stays off welfare. We need to reach out to more of these kids and save them, one by one.
When you become a Boys Town Family Sponsor, if you'd like, we'll send you a free copy of Common Sense Parenting from the experts here at Boys Town. Hundreds of thousands of parents all across the country have found this book full of down-to-earth advice for anyone with kids aged 3 to 16. To be a good parent today, you need a warm heart and a cool head. Common Sense Parenting helps you with both. Yours free when you become a Boys Town Family Sponsor with your pledge of $20 a month. Thanks for your call. You know, every child needs love more than anything else. Unconditional love from mom and dad. When that love is withdrawn and the child is rejected, their trust betrayed, the results are absolutely devastating. Listen to Valerie. I was 10 years old and we had, my mom had just taken us from my dad and it was after a vacation and so I thought we were going on another vacation. She just, you know, told us to pack everything in the car and my dad didn't even know that we left. And I just had this sense, this feeling that something was wrong so I took off from work and came back home. All the drawers open, all the kids clothes gone. She stole the kids, stopped by the bank, emptied the savings accounts. She took us to Arizona. We had lived down there for like two weeks in a tent and in a car. We didn't get fed a whole lot and we didn't get our showers. And I felt kind of scared also because I didn't know when I'd see my dad the next time. I didn't know how much longer I'd have to live in this car. The kids were put in the station wagon at night and my ex-wife and uh, her half-brother slept in the tent. I unzipped the tent and I had walked in on my mom having sex. I didn't know a whole lot about what was going on, but I kind of did. She had told me, no, if you tell anybody about what you saw, Valerie, I will kill you. I was 10 years old and I believed her. That tears someone up inside just to hear that from your mother. I'll kill you. And I felt real sick inside. And it hurt. And I haven't seen her since. Can you imagine turning your back on a child like that? And just walking out of their life? That's a blow at the very heart of a child. Even if a mother should forget the fruit of her womb, I will not forget you, the Lord says. We have to be the ones who substitute for that mom. The hardest part for me for not um, having a mom around would be um, someone to talk to, someone to be there during the hard times. I was terribly angry. Everything just fell apart. I started with the drugs and the alcohol, and I mean, my grades had dropped from A, B to D and Fs. I looked at Valeria, and I really was concerned. I felt that she would not finish high school. I felt that she would become pregnant. She certainly was very, very resistant to anyone in authority. She came home one night, started ripping the house up, throwing things around, pushing me around. I raised my hand towards her and she says, go ahead and hit me. She says, I'll call the cops. And she went for the phone. I said, no, I'm calling the cops. I knew that if we didn't get help, that she was going to run away. 
Valerie's suffering is very deep. I was working very hard to get Valerie into Boys Town. When I arrived at Boys Town, I didn't want to be here at all. I just had a real poor attitude. If you could see how angry and fearful the kids are when they come. I didn't let really anybody know who I was. I just really kept quiet. I wanted to play the tough guy that, so that no one could hurt me any more than I had already been hurt. Probably first impression was that she was covering up quite a bit. Basically, it was like walls that she put up in front of her. One of the main keys to Boys Town is we're just going to keep loving you and loving you and loving you. She's excited about graduating, too. And the neat thing is sooner or later, the grace of God gets into Valerie's heart. She says, I just quit fighting their love for me. We do a lot of positive reinforcement, uh, catch them being good. We all teach around here. No one ignores behavior that is damaging or more hurtful. For Valerie, it means confronting the pain and suffering caused when she was abandoned by her mother. Um, if my mom was here now, um, I think I'd tell her that I forgive her for all the stuff that she's caused us. I mean, all the pain and stuff that she put us through. I mean, because I know that there's somewhere in her heart that she, um, that she loves us. So I'd just like to tell her that I forgive her. I think it's absolutely remarkable that after all that Valerie's been through, she would say, I'm ready to forgive. I just can't wait to go to college. I'm excited. I, I talked to my dad today. Graduation represents, for our kids, Valerie included, success in a world filled with failure. And so it represents the new me. And if I'm a new me, I've got a future. I can dream about it. Glory to God. My dreams are to go to college and major in accounting and someday, later on down the road, have a family. All the teaching and all the skills that I've learned while I'm here, I think it'll help me in my adult years. I have a lot of confidence in myself that I'll be able to do well. Boys Town always had hope in me. They never gave up. When you look at Valerie today, you see a beautiful, competent young woman, someone who will make the most of every opportunity in life that comes her way. But remember, Valerie, the little girl, the lost, terrified child whose mother told her, I'll kill you. Without Boys Town, that girl would have been headed for a teen pregnancy or drug addiction or both, and her children would have suffered the consequences. But Valerie turned herself around and there are hundreds of thousands of kids growing up today, hopeless, loveless, motherless, fatherless, who can do the same thing if we show them the way. Will you help? You can do it by becoming a Boys Town family sponsor with a pledge of $20 a month. As a family sponsor, you'll be helping support a specific family home at Boys Town, up to eight kids and a trained family teacher couple. You'll help assure that these eight kids get the love and care and guidance they've never had. Here's how it works. When you call with your pledge, we'll send you a packet with a photo of your family teacher couple and a letter from them describing each of the kids in your Boys Town family. And they'll keep you updated too with a quarterly letter telling you all about the family's activities and how the kids are progressing you're going to know how your dollars and prayers are changing lives month by month. By the way, if you can't give on a monthly basis, please send a single gift of $25, $50, or $100. Whatever you can afford, every dollar will help transform a life. It's easy to use your credit card, and it also saves us mailing costs. Please make your call now. 
Los Angeles jury has convicted four gang members of the murder of three-year-old Stephanie. An 18-year-old high school senior is accused of raping and murdering a young girl. In New Jersey, police arrested a 13-year-old boy for the illegal possession of 21 rifles, eight handguns. I can't tell you how many times someone has said to me, this has got to stop. We need more police, more prisons, more government funding. We got to do something. William Bennett, former Secretary of Education and co-chair of the Council on Crime in America, believes that help will only come by going to the root of the problem. There's been a lot written about uh, poverty, economic poverty, um, leading to the disastrous results we have now in the lives of some children. But in fact, economic poverty isn't so much a cause as is what I call mor moral poverty. And that's the deprivation of a child who does not have an adult in his life who genuinely cares about that child. They're called throwaway kids, these children who were abused, rejected, or neglected. If we don't help them in time, they could be America's next generation of criminals and abusers. And these are the kinds of kids who come to Boys Town. But the good news is, if they want to change, they can. We began by asking them if they want to be healed. Do they want to be here? There's no locks on the doors. There's no bars on the windows. That's why to come here, you've got to be willing to say, number one, I got problems. Number two, I do want to get better. Then Boys Town starts over with these kids by providing the love, support, teaching, structure, and accountability of a family. But there's one more key to Boys Town success. They give the kids faith. Father Flanagan said, the image of God is in the heart of every child. We should teach them to pray. But how they pray, that's up to them. Thank God for institutions like Boys Town, where they don't give up, where they say we can save these kids. If we don't support organizations like Boys Town over the next 10 to 15 years, we are going to pay a terrible price in this society. We can't sit back and wait for someone else to take action. This is something we can and must do ourselves. That's why I'm committed to this cause, and I'm asking you to join with me today. Right now, Boys Town is giving care to 30,000 kids in 16 centers across the country. They're reaching hundreds of thousands of children every year by training teachers, juvenile counselors, and parents. They're making a big difference. And we can do even more. It all starts with you and me, reaching out with compassion to a boy or girl. Go to your phone right now and become a Boys Town family sponsor with a pledge of $20 a month. You'll know you're doing something that really matters, giving the kids a second chance at life. All it takes is $20 a month and a little opening in your heart. Please call now. What happens to a child whose mother and father are never there for him, who never show him any love? Add violence, horrible violence, to this picture, and you wonder how on earth the child can survive. Meet Jose. My dad was wanted by the police because this man had um, beaten my older brother. I pushed my dad, my dad pushed him back, and uh, my dad had a, like a knife, turned him around and like, cut his throat, and like kept stabbing him in the ground. The guy died. My dad didn't get arrested or anything. He left, took off. I mean, he didn't even say anything to us. He just got up and left. My mom abandoned us. I was eight. Um, I had a younger brother, seven, and an older brother, nine. She just left, I guess. She didn't show no concern for us. I think that's still hurting me right now, the fact that I had not a mother that doesn't show any kind of love towards me, no matter how good I'm doing. You see all your other friends, and you go visit them at their house. 
You see their parents hugging them, kissing them. It's something that I've never gotten. It made me feel lonely, sad, angry. And my dad never lived with me. I didn't know him. I always hated him for the fact that he knew where we were and never did anything for us. I never got a chance to call him dad. I never, I, I've never had the opportunity to call a man dad. You know, I've talked to thousands of teenagers around the country, and over and over again, I hear the statement, I never had a dad. You know, 70 to 80% of the people in prison grew up without fathers. It's no surprise that Jose found himself in trouble with the police. I was in my police car. I was driving down Dixie Highway in October of 91. When I received a call over my radio um, of a young man who stole something. When I arrived, I met with a young boy. He was about 10, maybe 10 years old. The place that he lived in was, in, was terrible. They had trash everywhere. It's one of the worst places I've ever seen. Um, I placed uh, the young man in my police car. I noticed he was wearing a chain, kind of like what gangs wear. And I asked him if he's so much into jewelry, maybe he'd like to wear these. And I took my cuffs off and threw them into his lap. I said, keep it up, son. This is what you're going to be wearing for the rest of your life. He sat there in my police car and just looked at the cuffs, and you can just tell he was scared. He was arrested by several police departments from Miami up to Juneau Beach from stolen vehicles, um, gang-related incidences, fights all the time, stealing from merchants in the area, drugs. Incarcerating someone oftentimes does not teach them how to live in society. It makes them usually better criminals. And so we need not to throw them away, to lock them up, but to see if we can't find some goodness. Officer Menaki kept track of Jose. He called Boys Town. You could tell when Jose came to Boys Town that he was very, very troubled. Initially, Jose resisted all of the things that we were trying to do to help him. Jose broke the rules. Jose pushed the limits. He didn't want to accept feedback. He didn't do well in school. He was involved in some activities that were really unhealthy for him as far as drugs and relationships with females. Jose was acting out at such a high rate and it didn't appear that he wanted to get better. We had made the decision for him to lose his placement to Boys Town. Deep down inside, Jose loved Boys Town. And at that point in time, Jose looked at us with tears flowing down his face and he said, I've got to tell you something that's been troubling me for a long, long time. You can do whatever you want with me, but I need to tell you this. I owe this to you. And he told us how he was abused as a young child. And he shared that with us because he wanted the help so desperately. We said, Jose's asking for our help. We can't let him go now. If you've ever seen a child talk for the first time about their abuse, it's scary. And you can almost see them revert back to that day when they were beaten. What happens to the heart and soul of a little child that is abused, you take away their childhood. You substitute for their childhood pain. You take away their hopes. You substitute despair. Eight out of 10 kids who come to Boys Town have been abused in some way. Many of them have buried the secret so deep they can't get to it. It's too painful. But once Jose opened up, his life began to change. I think I've hidden so much of my life. I've never told nobody I've been so close. I just felt good, you know, being able to trust them. I was not an angel and 
I did get in trouble and stuff, but they stuck there with me and it made me feel good. I was like, man, these people really care, you know? They really love me. There you go, get the ball. Good eye. What I've learned here is that taking responsibility is a major part of manhood. You know, you can't blame other people for what you do. You know, your actions are your actions. It makes me feel proud because I've overcome a lot of obstacles. Boys Town has given me a second chance in life. I owe my success to them. It broke my heart to hear Jose say, I've never been able to call a man dad. What a terrible, empty feeling. I know from my own personal experience that one of the things I had growing up was that I was able to feel like a son. That's the gift my dad gave to me. I still love hearing my dad call me son, hearing him say, thank you, son, today. So you can see why Jose's family at Boys Town means so much to him. Despite his efforts to fail, they never gave up on him. Jose was a budding criminal, headed for our streets, and Boys Town rescued him, saved his life. That's exactly why it's so important that you become a Boys Town family sponsor with your pledge of $20 a month. As a family sponsor, you'll be supporting a specific family home at Boys Town with up to eight kids and a family teacher couple. When you call with your pledge, we'll send you a packet with a photo and personal letter from your family teacher couple telling all about themselves and giving you a description of the kids in your new family. We need thousands of sponsors who will stay with their family of kids month by month because it takes time to heal, to change habits, to learn how to trust and resolve a conflict without punching someone in the face. I'll promise you this, you will see results. You'll receive a quarterly update from your family teacher telling you how the kids are doing, sharing their successes and triumphs, and even their prayer needs. And we also want to send you a Boys Town financial report so you can know exactly how your dollars are rescuing young lives. Remember, it's the gifts from people like you and me that have always been the lifeline of Boys Town. If you can use your credit card, great. It'll save mailing costs. But the important thing is to call and help. Do it right now. It wasn't too long ago that I had the privilege of speaking at Boys Town. I related a comment I heard from a young soldier during the Gulf War. He said, I'm not afraid because I'm well trained and I know my job. And I'm going into battle with my family. If you grow up in a family that loves and supports you, you can face almost anything. If you don't, you could be headed for trouble. Boys Town takes in kids in trouble and turns them around. They become a model for the nation and an American success story. I am proud to be an enthusiastic supporter of Boys Town, and I encourage you to join me. The message of Boys Town is simple and straightforward. Something works, somebody cares. For the last 20 years, we've accepted girls at Boys Town as well as boys. The old institutional dorms have gone, Instead, we give the kids a loving home at our main campus in Nebraska or any one of our 16 centers around the country. We're here 24 hours a day for our kids. We give them lots of love. But we also don't let them get away with anything. All our boys and girls get a good education. Um, they get medical care, clothing. And the kids have chores. They play sports and go to church or synagogue. Our success rate is 81%. That means a child graduates from the program and high school, gets a job, or goes on to college and stays off welfare. We need to reach out to more of these kids and save them, one by one. When you become a Boys Town Family Sponsor, if you'd like, we'll send you a free copy of Common Sense Parenting from the experts here at Boys Town. Hundreds of thousands of parents all across the country have found this book full of down-to-earth advice for anyone with kids aged 3 to 16. To be a good parent today, you need a warm heart and a cool head. Common Sense Parenting helps you with both. Yours free when you become a Boys Town Family Sponsor with your pledge of $20 a month. Thanks for your call.
Imagine being 16 years old and feeling your life is finished, having no reason to dream. One in five of the kids who come to Boys Town have attempted suicide. It's a miracle that a girl like Nina is still alive. I wanted to die. I tried killing myself like about two or three times. What brought me to the point of thinking that I wanted to end my life was um, when I got raped. So many things had happened to me that year. My dad had died. My relationship with my mom went down. I didn't think anybody loved me. I thought that I was just the most horrible person in the world. I thought I was disgusting. I hated myself. Didn't think there was anything to live for. I got involved with gangs. People were shooting at us. There were drive-bys. There was so much violence. I got arrested a couple times. I didn't know. I didn't know what, a, what was next. I didn't know if I was gonna be in a coffin next or in jail. Without Boys Town in my life, I probably would be dead probably would be dead. I know I would. Sentía que se me iba de las manos y sentía que se iba para destruirse. Ella se estaba destruyendo y me estaba destruyendo a mí. My sister Fanny and my mom, they lived in my mother's house with Nina. They were afraid. They didn't want to go to sleep. You know, they sleep with one eye open because they were afraid of Nina. Geraldina iba down, 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 y yo sentía que yo estaba en las puertas del infierno. Nina's life was completely out of control. Boys Town had to start all over with her, building trust, teaching behavioral skills she never learned, confronting her anger, all in the context of a healthy family structure, eight kids and a husband and wife team who are trained Boys Town family teachers. My first impression of Nina uh, walking down the halls. She was a typical girl gangster. She had a tendency to um, uh, walk down the center of the halls, not on either side. And if kids coming towards her were too close, she would shoulder them or, or elbow them out of her way. I was a very hard person to love. I wouldn't let anybody be friends with me. It was like a mask. I was wearing a mask. Nobody could deal with me. Nobody could mess with me. On the outside, I was harder than rock. The very deep inside of me was, I needed help, I needed someone, I needed somebody to love me, I need someone to be there for me. There was a little girl in there, and she was very scared. Boys Town's like a field hospital in a great war. We're the people that take the children that are hurt so badly off the streets, and we literally try to put them back together again. Just a thing. They gave me their trust. They made me feel wanted. And they made me feel that I was somebody and I was special. We start at ground zero with all these kids. And we are here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We eat, sleep, and breathe it. And we're here for them. And the more you're around these kids, like Nina, the stronger the bond is, the stronger the relationship. I can't believe that's the same person that, that we met two years ago. I'm more active, I'm more outgoing. I play soccer, I played softball. I opened myself up to more people. I'm making my mom proud. My mom and I have a better relationship now that I've come here. I wish my dad was here so he can see me walk, you know. Um, I think he'd be proud of me, the change that I've made, the person who I'm becoming, the person I am today. I think there's a lot of Ninas out there. And I think there's a lot of girls that need help like I needed. And they need to know that somebody's there for them. I want to live life to the fullest. 
I want to do things for kids. A voice sounded for me. I want to be a social worker. I have plans to go to college. I have big plans for myself now. I doubt if any of us seeing Nina stride through the hall on her first day at Boys Town would have guessed there was such a tender, sensitive young woman inside crying to come out. And if it wasn't for Boys Town and people like you who want to help, that caring young woman would still be trapped inside a mask of anger and belligerence. Right now, I want to ask you to go to your phone, call the toll-free number, and become a Boys Town family sponsor with a pledge of $20 a month. Remember, you'll be sponsoring a specific Boys Town family of up to eight kids, and you'll be following each boy's or girl's progress through quarterly reports from the family teacher couple. You'll be helping give your kids a real home and the parenting they've never had with love, structure, discipline, responsibilities, even something as basic as three square meals. You should know that Boys Town isn't funded by any particular religious group or foundation, and its books are always open to the public. If you can use your credit card, it'll save mailing costs. The important thing is to call and help. Do it right now. Boys Town graduation is now a week away, and a lot of feelings are right on the surface. They're sad to say goodbye, eager to face the future, but there's more. For our kids at Boys Town, this graduation is a celebration of a second chance at life. I never really imagined myself in a cap and gown and just to be able to put it on. I felt good. I feel like I'm more than ready to graduate. Yeah, I'm, I might count down the hours now. <laughs> so I've always told myself that I was going to do it. You know, I kept my promise that I would graduate from high school and that I would succeed. When I walk across the stage tomorrow, I'm going to be very happy. I'm very emotional. I'm be crying a lot. I love you, Mom. Out of happiness that I've made it this far, and that I know I can make it even further. When I leave here, I want my family teachers to remember me as a kid who set his sight on a goal and accomplished it. One of Robert's goals was to speak at his class baccalaureate. When he was chosen for the honor, he spoke from his heart and his experience. Boys Town has shown me that I am somebody, not because of the gang colors I wore or who I beat up. I came in there and I gave my speech, and I was trying not to choke up there because I was talking and everything. And when I looked out and I seen all my friends and all the people I cared about and they were listening to my words, it was a whole bunch of emotions all at one time. The next day, Robert competed in his last track meet. A few minutes before his race began, his mother arrived. This is the first time she has ever seen him run. She always used to call and tell me that she wanted to see me race. I'm just glad that she's here now so she can see me graduate now. It's times when she just breaks down and cries about it. But yeah, I know it's not tears of sadness, but that she's just overwhelmed what happens. Because I'm her first son and the first one to graduate. It's time for the Boys Town Awards Banquet, and Valerie is one of the finalists for the Wagner Award, a full four-year college scholarship. It's so hard to explain the feelings I felt on stage. My heart was just beating super fast. It was so exciting. I'm so proud of myself. And then when I walked off stage and 
my dad was in the crowd and he stood up and gave me a huge hug. And, I mean, that just, that made my night. It's my dream come true. <laughs> Boys Town helped me realize that I wanted to succeed. I didn't want to fail. They care for you and they show you that no matter what you've done and no matter who you are and no matter what anybody's said about you, they're still going to love you and they're still going to care about you. Can I come home for Thanksgiving? Oh, you bet. <laughs> and no matter how much you want to give up, they're not going to give up on you. And that's why we succeed. Graduation represents, for our kids, success in a world filled with failure. The single most important characteristic of kids when they come here is they're powerless against the forces that are surrounding them in their lives, the dark forces. When you come to Boys Town, you get healed. Have you, have you started to learn our graduation song? Oh, yeah, we know it. Celine Dion. Which one, the passengers? To say goodbye to all the friends we knew. I've done a lot of hard work for this day, so. I'm ready. The graduation ceremony itself is a time for some dignity, and each of you has that, so I'm going to be asking you. Walking across the state, will hand you the diploma and shake your hand. getting that diploma, I've come a long way. Oh my gosh. Whew. Jose doesn't know it, but he's going to have a special guest at graduation. Hey, buddy. The policeman who first arrested Jose all those years ago. He never gave up on Jose. How do you feel? He finally believed in himself and worked hard to get to where he's at. He's grown up tremendously. I actually see a, a man in him now, not, not the little boy that was always looking to get in trouble. I want to say to Boys Town, thanks for being there. Thanks for making me the success I am. This is what gives you the energy for all the other 51 weeks. You're just like any mom, any dad, any grandma, any grandpa. When you see your kids standing up there and you say, wow, they did it. Wow. Oh, I can't tell you how good that makes you feel. Why? Because you're all energized. And I, it just, it makes you cry, uh, tears of joy. When you see those children, one by one, in their graduation gowns, walking across stage, Jose. for every one of those, think of the 10 kids out there who are still in the darkness and who will never graduate unless they come Nina. like these kids have come. And unless we can embrace them. Valerie e. There are many, many tears of joy shed on graduation day. Tears of sadness that I'm leaving tears of happiness that I am leaving, tears of fear, tears of hope. The psalmist says those who sow in tears shall reap in gladness. And the tears are like the spring rain that comes here. It makes everything brighten up. It's the hope of a harvest, a bountiful harvest. These were the throwaway kids of American society. They're the kids that everybody gave up on. And if you applaud these kids, let's not throw away all those who are still out there. My dream for America is for every boy and girl who's crying out for help to find a home right here at Boystown. You know, almost every day, I get a letter like this. To whom it may concern, he starts. My name is Mike, I'm 15 years old, and I am seeking help. The reason I want to go to Boystown is my mom often beats me with an electrical cord or a shoe. 
She often says, you're no good. Or why did I have you? You're worthless. I've tried to kill myself. I've tried to run away. So I'm coming to you as my last resort. Please, help me. Sincerely, Mike. This is the reason. I'm asking you, right now, to go to your phone, to pledge $20 a month, or whatever you can afford. Help Mike and all the other kids of America find hope and healing. We can't sit back and wait for someone else to take action. It all starts with you and me, reaching out with compassion to a boy or girl. Go to your phone right now and become a Boys Town family sponsor with a pledge of $20 a month. You'll be helping support a specific family at Boys Town with up to eight kids and a trained family teacher couple who live with them. You'll help assure that every child gets the love and care and guidance they need. When you call, you'll get a photo and letter from your family teacher couple telling all about themselves and the kids you're helping. Every few months, they'll send you an update on how the kids are doing. You'll know you're doing something that really matters, giving the kids a second chance at life. All it takes is $20 a month and a little opening in your heart. Please call now. When you become a Boys Town Family Sponsor, if you'd like, we'll send you a free copy of Common Sense Parenting. From the experts here at Boys Town, hundreds of thousands of parents all across the country have found this book full of down-to-earth advice for anyone with kids age 3 to 16. To be a good parent today, you need a warm heart and a cool head. Common Sense Parenting helps you with both. Yours free when you become a Boys Town family sponsor with your pledge of $20 a month. Thanks for your call. With just seconds left for the sake of a girl or boy who needs your help, Step to your phone. If you've already called, thank you. Helping lift someone else's burden is always the lightest kind of load to carry. Years ago, a little boy at Boys Town said it best when he looked up at Father Flanagan and said, He ain't heavy, Father. He's my brother. God bless you. The road is long. Our phones will stay open after we go off the air. If you reach a busy signal, please keep calling. The preceding program has been sponsored by Boys Town.